Thank you very much. Um, so uh, my superintendent's report, I just want, to, as you can imagine what's taking place right now, uh, schools are feverishly getting ready for the start of the school year. And uh, we are thrilled about the opportunity that awaits us on August the 20th. Um, you can just see the excitement. Schedule pickups, I believe, are happening right now. Uh, but I wanted to, just to remind the board of three important dates. Uh, August the 9th, which is this Friday, is our new employee orientation. Uh, it's a breakfast at 730. Um, that is going to be at Lexington High School. Um, also, our first day for teachers is next Monday, just because of the FYI. And then the other big date for you is uh, August the 14th is convocation. Uh, that will be at Lexington High School. And we will be doing convocation differently this year. We're going to do it indoors as opposed to out. But by bringing it indoors, we can't do it all at one time. So we're going to have to have two sessions. Uh, and this year's host will be Lexington High School. Last year's host was White Knoll High School. So we will be doing that. So 830. Um, I would advise that uh, if you're interested in attending that event, you probably want to be there by 8. 8 to 810 is probably the latest you want to get there because there will be lots of traffic and those kinds of things. And that is uh, all for my report. No, Thursday night is um, adult ed graduation. I'm sorry about that. That wasn't, that's a, wasn't that's on a my big, list. That's a yep. big day. We love that day um, in our in our world. That's a great day for us. Thank so you for that very reminder. Very inspiring night. Yeah. The Bengal Bash uh, at 4 o'clock. Yep. Got a okay. lot of good things going on. A lot okay. of good stuff happening. So thank you. Th that, that's Lewis? all I have. So um, I just do, I, since we had you here, I um, want to give you a, just a brief, I believe we just have a, a quick operations update for you just to show a couple pictures. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dr. Little. I'll, I'll go ahead and get started while he's getting that up. Um, of course, we are very excited to um, bring you pictures tonight of our new Beachwood Middle School. We have received final occupancy uh, approval on the school and they had registration there yesterday and a, a lot of uh, great comments and excitement among the students and parents who made their way into the into the campus. Um, we've got a few shots here that were, were taken recently. This is the dance room, um, the theater, uh, all the areas are, are ready and uh, for occupancy. This is the uh, media center um, taken from, from above. They actually were receiving their books tomorrow. So... This will look a lot different tomorrow as we get uh, things loaded in there. This is another shot of that uh, from the entry area. Um, excited to have all the technology in and, and, and working and the furniture in. Um, shot of the vo volleyball, girls uh, volleyball um, team has assembled and has been practicing. Um, they've had uh, football players out there as well and cheerleading. They had their first uh, – I guess their first cheerleading squad um, had their practice um, this week. So a lot of good activity going on at Beachwood. Here's a shot of the registration. I talked with Ms. Jenkinson this morning. She said it was the smoothest registration um, that she's ever been a part of. So she's very excited about that. Um, and then moving on to Carolina Springs Elementary School. Um, a few projects going on there. Uh, this is not really exciting uh, to, to most people, but this is a, a drainage um project that we have there there's a uh, we've had some issues on the back side of that site for a number of years and and we've been able to address that um in in this work this summer um this is uh, a storage building many of our schools in the um, 18 referendum are receiving storage buildings and they are all super excited uh, about these buildings so this is that um, building started out um, some additional sidewalks uh, in some, some of the situations that around some of our schools, uh, traffic flow or student flow goes in different ways than the, than the original layout was designed. And so that we, we've gone back and accommodated that. And that's one of the things we're doing here uh, with these sidewalks. Um, this is a, it's hard to see in this, in this shot, but this is a new um, sports floor in their multipurpose room. So they have, um, it used to be carpet and they now have a, a sports surface um, in there. They're very excited about that uh, for the PE classes. Uh, moving on to Centerville, um, we have this project underway with MBCon. Of course, it'll open in August um, of this coming year. Very excited about the progress here. Um, footings have been uh, started, uh, underground rough ends for plumbing and, and electrical 
on the um, D wing, which is one of the classroom wings. Uh, you recall this is a prototype uh, design for, from Rocky Creek and Meadow Glen um, and Deerfield. And so a lot of good, good progress has been made here. Um, and we're on schedule uh, for that opening um, next year. Moving on to Pelion Middle School, the, the new school there in Pelion. Um, a lot of work has gone on on this site as well. Um, and it, it's a good bit larger campus, um, but um, great progress is being made here. This is uh, being constructed by H.G. Reynolds and it's the same plan as Beechwood. And again, they're in similar uh, circumstances with uh, footings and underground electrical and plumbing rough-ins uh, have started. Uh, we have a building pad uh, ready, obviously, and, and so really good progress uh, on this site as well. Um, we're a good bit further along here compared to where we were at Beechwood just because we were able to get a building pad ready so quickly because of the site uh, layout and the soil type here. Um, basically, when it rains, it just seeps right through the sand and you keep on working, so it's been really good uh, for the folks out there working at um, the new Pelion Middle School. Uh, moving on to Lexington High School. Um, everybody's really excited about the uh, parking lot uh, renovations there. Uh, those have occurred at the Lexington campus and the Technology Center. Uh, we still have a few areas left to uh, repave and we're trying to coordinate that with the uh, roofing that you can see going on uh, in this shot as well. Um, and we anticipate being completed with uh, this work by um, the uh, uh, convocation uh, ceremony. And if, if we aren't, we may have to relocate to Whitenall High School, but the plan is to be finished here and, and have the ceremony here. So they really want to show off their new parking lot. Um, it looks great. Yeah. I was over there last week and I actually parked right by the front entrance yeah. and it's beautiful. Yeah, it's really going to break my heart the first day they paint the... <laughs> Painted. parking lot instead of the um, rock that's out there. So hopefully we can encourage them to do that. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, this is, is uh, was, was long overdue and, and needed progress here at Lexington High School. We've also uh, gone inside and replaced some uh, carpet in some of the classroom areas with, with tile, which is our, our standard now. It's just a, a more environmentally friendly um, space uh, or material in our, in our classrooms. And, and so um, we've got a number of rooms that that has occurred in over the summer and we'll continue that work um, through the fall if, if um, you know we, we can hop around classrooms when, and do those in a day or two. So um, we've also been very busy with furniture. As you recall, part of the referendum um, was future ready classrooms at all of our schools. Uh, had some work going on at Oak Grove and Red Bank Elementary. Uh, you can see some of the, the furniture in, in these classrooms is, is there and, and ready for use. Um, and uh, it makes a really big difference in the, the look of those spaces and the functionality. Um, a lot of, uh, lots involved in this. You got to get, get rid of the old furniture and stage it. And uh, it takes a lot of help and support uh, from the school. So uh, they've been really cooperative and helpful and very eager to get this um, new equipment in their spaces. So. Very excited about that happening at, at both of those schools um, as well. Um, and as always, you can track our building plan, plan progress um, individually by each each project um, on the website and uh, number of projects out there and number of updates. Um, we, we take pictures regularly and post those up there um, for uh, you to see. So with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Any questions for Mr. Salter's board, Dr. Guyton? Yeah, one question I did have, since we have um, essentially a prototype design for a middle school or a prototype for a, an elementary, when we have different uh, contractors working on those projects, invariably you're going to find things within the construction process that need to be tweaked or uh, modified, value engineering may show up, different things like that. Do they communicate back to sort of the central architectural holding person and then it's filtered out on, say, the next job? Is there, is there a mechanism for that? Sure. So the way it works is with the prototype plans, you have the same architect because they technically own that right. plan. So they're involved in that process th through the course of each building prototype. So, for example, at Beechwood, 
um, that was the first middle school um, plan that we use that for that. Um, so as we go through uh, the, the design development of that school, um, all of the um, uh, requests for information, they're called RFIs, the contractors, when, when you know, maybe some area of the plans um, needs to be clarified or whatever, all of that stuff is logged and documented and incorporated into plans. Any change orders that are um, required uh, are also logged and documented and incorporated into the plans. So you, you basically have a new baseline when the next contractor starts the project. Um, and then typically what you see is as you, know, as you go, you see less RFIs, less change orders um, because the plan is refined and, and continued to improve. Um, and so everything is tracked and logged. Um, and actually, we just had a, a debrief with our uh, all the engineers, electrical, mechanical, uh, plumbing, and, and all the different um, engineers out at Beachwood recently with the architect to make sure that all of the tweaks and changes that were made through the course of the uh, construction were all incorporated going into the um, Pelion uh, process. So that that is very much how it works. Uh, so each time you use that prototype, um, it's more efficient, um, and you can hand it to a different contractor if you need to, and, and they can um, easily build it. Sure. Thanks. Any other questions, board? Okay. Um, hearing none, we'll move to 10.0, which is items for board information, and there is nothing behind that tonight. Um, that's just a placeholder. There, uh, The financial reports will be included in our regular board meeting at the end of the month. Um, before we adjourn, I just wanted to give a, a shout-out to Dr. Bissell and her team. Um, Ms. Green and Mr. Anderson and I all attended the closing ceremonies for the summer reading camp. You could not move. There were so many people there, so many parents. The kids were so excited. That's just a really wonderful program. And Dr. Bissell was just telling us that they feel so good about where these kids are and where their reading levels are. So I just made you feel good, didn't it, Anne-Marie? Great, great thing. And then also, we're going to learn more more detail next uh, at our next meeting, but uh, we found out last week we received a grant from the South Carolina State Department of Education that um, Ms. Spearman wrote, and we have been awarded 22 new propane buses. And I think they put the order in after the press conference with the governor. I think the order went in the next day, and Ms. Spearman says we should have those buses on our bus lots and running to our schools in, I think, January, maybe February, because they've got to build the buses. So, but I know that uh, Mr. Caldwell is going to give us more information. That was so exciting. So I've just been curious if they're propane buses. Does that mean Mr. Caldwell is going to be grilling hamburgers in the buses too? <laughs> I think hot dogs. So, That's possible. That's possible. <laughs> who knows? We'll we'll find out more next month. So I'm going to tease it. If you, it's going to be an exciting meeting at our next one. You already know a little bit of our agenda, so be prepared. So we'll be learning all about that. Board, at this time, it's time to adjourn. Uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Thank you, Ms. Green. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Oswald. All in favor, please stand up. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you.